Hello everyone, welcome to the EJB part of the course. Hope you're excited to start a new section. And here I have found on the Oracle's website a diagram that shows the Java EE architecture and this will help us understand where EJBs are located in the architecture. This is the web tier, this is our servlets and JSP, and this is our users as browsers. So everything here and below is our server, and this blue section here is the remote clients' browser. It's, you know, people from all over the world can access our application, and that represents their browsers. Here is our web tier, that's on our Java EE server, that's our servlets and JSP. And below the servlets and JSP, we have this enterprise Java beans. And what the enterprise Java beans is supposed to do is, it's supposed to provide services, it's supposed to provide information to our servlets and JSP. So instead of our logic, of our application logic, sometimes known as business logic, instead of all of that living and residing in our servlets and JSP, it's better to keep our servlets and JSP light in terms of logic and move all our business logic to the enterprise Java Bean tier. This is, you see, sometimes known as the business tier because it implements the business logic. In particular, this EJB tier is great to communicate with the database, get data back from the database, process it, deal with the data, apply all the business logic as necessary, and then supply the results to our servlets and JSPs. So the servlets and JSPs don't have to do so much processing, most of the processing done in the enterprise Java Bean layer. Some of the benefits of working with the enterprise Java Bean container for business logic and database communication. So uh, two benefits are one is that the enterprise Java Bean container provides automatic transaction management. The enterprise Java Bean container provides automatic transaction management. So from the servlet layer, we would have to mostly do manual transaction management if we want transactions in our database communication. But from the EJB layer, we get automatic transaction. The enterprise Java Bean container knows to put limits on our transaction, where our transaction begins and ends, and knows how to either commit our transaction if all our database communication statements go successfully or if there is a failure in one or more of our database communication statements, our EJB container knows how to roll back our transaction in many cases automatically. So we get the benefit of transaction management. We get security benefits. Another big benefit is uh, threat safety by default. As we can remember from the servlets and JSP tier, we have to worry about threat safety because we could have a situation where two, where two clients, two web browsers, try to access the same servlet in the same time, which may cause concurrency problem and data corruption. And the enterprise Java Beans take care of 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 take care of threat managing management for us automatically so they make sure that if we for example have a place where we write to the database and two two clients ask the same to ask to write to the database in the same time the enterprise java bean container will automatically know to first may have the run one client says write operation take care of that complete it and only then move to the next operation it will automatically know to put a so-called lock on our method so then our method will be locked while one client using the right the method that writes to the database 
and then the after the after the write operation is complete only then the second client will be able to write to the database so the so that way we'll have thread safety we have so all issues with thread safety are taken care of automatically all issues with transaction management are taken care of automatically so things will happen as part of a transaction that can that can if that if something goes wrong everything can be rolled back and will not be committed and will be committed to the database only if everything went well so those so that's why it's advantageous to use the enterprise java beans uh, for database communication and business logic that provide us a lot of great benefits by default without us having to to uh, do them manually as opposed to the servlets in JSP where to get the same things you would have to do everything manually. All right, uh, thank you very much and in the next tutorial we will look at an EJBs in practice, in practice and in detail. Thank you very much. We'll continue in the next tutorial.